You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now, and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Future Tech and Future Tech Health podcast. I have Paige Mayer. Uh, she's the director of communications at a company called Our Pact, O-U-R-P-A-C-T.com. Paige, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, what's the premise of uh, the company? What do you guys do? So Our Pact is a digital parenting app. Uh, what it's most commonly known for is it allows parents to set limits around children's mobile devices, so specifically app use. Uh, in addition to that, we have web filtering and uh, location monitoring as well. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, well, I have uh, three teenagers, and it's a constant <laughs> battle to tell them, get off the phone, put the phone down. Don't walk down the stairs with the phone, so I know what you mean. Yeah. But, um, what are some typical guidelines that you've seen users put in place that are effective? That's a great question. Um, no two kids are going to have the same rules, and that's something that we really encourage. Um, the restrictions that you set up will really depend on the age of your child, what their interests are, um, you know, just generally what their schedule is looking like. But Typically, what we see is parents setting up definitely bedtime block schedules, so that makes sure that apps aren't available after bedtime, and a lot of parents also use our allowance feature so that kids throughout the day will only have access to apps basically when parents say that it's okay, um, and they can play and pause that time throughout the day. So it's really teaching them to be responsible with their own devices. Um, in addition to that, you can set up app rules. So... Of course, there are certain application, let's say your child has a health issue and you want to have health related apps always available on your child's device um, or there are educational apps that you want available during school hours or homework time, but you don't want social media and games. You can actually customize what is available and when using the app. Well, I figured you'd have many users over time that gave you feedback on what works and what doesn't, et cetera. So any, yeah, exactly. any guidelines on best practices? Yeah, I mean, we definitely do take the feedback that parents provide to us, and we try to bake that feedback directly into the application. We've been on the market for about five years, and during that time, we've really listened to what our users are asking for, and we just basically develop our roadmap around that. Um, but some specific tips that come to mind uh, – setting the app store is always blocked. So then that way, if you know that your kid wants to install a new app, they're going to have to come to you and say, hey, mom, dad, I want to install this new app. And then in the app or in our pack, you actually unblock the app store so that you have that conversation with your child about, okay, what's this, inst this app you want to install? What is it used for? And you're actually directly involved in that process and you know what your child is doing mm. on that device. That's a good idea. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Is there any way to identify communications that your child gets possibly from bad actors somehow? Or, I mean, I don't know, um, you know, incoming texts that happen after midnight or uh, keywords and texts or things like that? Is there any, you know, advanced filtering that can be done like that? That's a really good question. Uh, at this time, we don't have contact filtering built in with our pact, but we have been working on another solution called View. Uh, that we're actually hoping to integrate into our pact uh, in the near-ish future. And what that does is it takes automated screenshots of children's devices and then basically scans those screenshots for specific keywords that fall into categories of profanity, violence, sexuality, um, drugs, and then they will actually inform parents, hey, something came up on your kid's device that you need to be aware of, and then parents can take a look from there. 
Yeah, well, that makes sense. What about just time of usage? I guess that's probably maybe an easy one to solve. You know, just uh, when the phone just stops working after a certain number of hours used or duration of a single session. So it depends on how the, the app rules are actually set up. But if you don't have allowance enabled, then basically it's just automated block schedules or on-demand blocks. So if you set up a schedule in your parent app, then the device will automatically block during those times. On iOS child devices, apps completely disappear. On Android child devices, the apps just can't be launched. Um, mm. Whereas if allowance is being used, then kids are the ones that are responsible for unblocking their own apps using their allowance timer. And so if their allowance time for the day expires, then their apps will automatically block. Okay, interesting. Um, is there, I mean, how do the kids react? I know in, in some ways it doesn't matter because it's for them, but uh, any ways to, you know, like let's say you have a, a kid that, you know, just has been using the phone however they like and you want to introduce this. How do you do it in such a way where they're not like, what the and they don't go crazy on you, you know, and they, they acclimate to it? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, really, it comes down to consistency. Uh, as a parent, I'm sure you realize that children really do thrive off of structure and consistency. And so maybe there will be a little bit of pushback when you first introdu introduce the application. But as long as it happens in tandem with a conversation, uh, we find that it doesn't really, it's not an issue long term. Um, you know, and that's something we really do encourage because if you sit down with a child and say, hey, you have a mobile device, this is a huge privilege and I'm trusting you to have this device, um, but it comes with responsibility. And just because you own this phone doesn't mean that you have unlimited access to apps and social media and games at all time. Why do you think it's important to have some restrictions and balance around screen time and you actually engage your child in that conversation so that they understand the why behind your setting those limits rather than just enforcing those limits without any conversation and then actually creating the rules and this this will depend on the age of the child but creating those rules with your child so okay, what do you think is a reasonable allowance to have in place for weekdays? How about the weekend? Um, what kind of schedule block do we want to want to create together? And then actually doing that, it, it's more of an agreement rather than these imposed limitations and rules. What's, um, okay, it's interesting. Any uh, stories that you've gotten from parents or the kids themselves that surprised you or delighted you or you thought were really cool? Yeah, I mean, we, we hear a lot, of course, from, from parents who just love the app, they talk about how big of a difference it's made for them. Um, specifically, we we even have actually reviews that are shared from children who say, you know, this app is a little bit annoying, but at the end of the day, I've seen an improvement in my grades. And overall, I've just seen an improvement in my life since I've been using this app because I'm not spending as much time playing these games. I'm out playing with my friends instead. Um, we also have a lot of support from parents of children with disabilities um, and it's just really helpful for them having that technology enforce the limits and again having that structure around it so that it's not just sporadic and you don't need to have arguments every single time. Um, it's just clean cut. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Again, any, any particular stories of uh, amazing things that have happened because of the app or, you know, because of the app, I don't know. Uh, it, It'll help the family to get over a crisis or a problem or anything. Anything yeah, that sticks out at you? We definitely, I mean, that's just a consistent theme. We hear from a lot of parents who say, you know, two weeks ago we were fighting every single day about screen time. And as soon as we installed this app, it's like everything changed. We had peace. There were no more arguments. The kids are going to bed. They're waking up and they're not tired. Uh, you know, we have our Sunday family time and everyone, we block the devices and the parents will set their devices away as well. And everyone's just hanging out. Nobody's looking at their screens and it's really hard. I mean, in this day and age, everyone's busy. Um, and so to really find those moments to connect and not be distracted, it's rare. So you have to be really conscious about it, but an app like our pact, it definitely helps. 
Yeah, I've noticed, like, you know, just for myself, if I'm sitting there and my phone is not in my hand, but it's, let's say it's sitting on the desk, but it's turned up where I can see the screen, it, it still pulls at me, you know? So I've, I've, you know, things like turning the phone over, so it's facing downwards help. I mean, the, I guess what I'm saying is I've discovered the nature of phones is so addictive that it, it's just incredible uh, the power it has. Yeah, it really is. And it's interesting because we have parents who will install management on their devices. So they're saying, I'm setting up these rules for you, but I want you to know that I'm setting them up for myself as well. So okay. you know, this is a problem everyone's experiencing. Um, we have students who use the app. We have professionals who use the app. Uh, there's really no limit. It is developed for the family environment, but it's used way beyond that. Um, and it's interesting that you bring that up, just sort of the psychology of the device, uh, because specifically with kids, as we know, they don't have that self-regulation that we have, and it's something that we're struggling with. So if you're struggling, I'm struggling, and we're adults, you think about a seven-year-old kid whose prefrontal cortex isn't even developed yet. They don't have that, that self-management. It's going to be 10 times harder for them to say, I've been on Instagram for half an hour. I should probably put my phone away. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Are there any um, templates that you've used? Uh, you know, I don't know, like a uh, sample one, maybe like, you know, after um, 10 p.m., the only functionality of the phone is resident apps and there's no internet usage or no phone usage or, you know, at, uh, I don't know, if you designate a dinner time setting, then for the next 40 minutes, like the phone's completely unusable. Anything like that pre-programmed stuff? Yeah, so when parents first set up their account, every account comes with a default bedtime schedule for their children. We don't really try to customize too much beyond that. We have recommended allowance times, but beyond that, not really. Uh, one thing that does come to mind, though, is that we have a family contract that we encourage parents to use with their kids when they first sign up for the app. And so that's basically just a PDF that they can print out and it has a list of, of rules basically that's saying, you know, not only will I, do I agree to adhere to these rules that you set up for me with our pact, but it goes beyond that into, you know, if I see something that makes me feel uncomfortable online, I'm going to come and talk to you about it and let you know. Um, I'm not going to be mean to other people online. I would never say anything online that I wouldn't say so to someone in person. And just setting those that foundation for young kids to be responsible digital citizens because it really does go beyond um, just setting those limits around when apps can be used to who you are when you have access to those apps and what you're doing when you are online. Okay, makes sense. Any difficulty that, that parents have when they first you know, broach the subject. I mean, do you have any sample, maybe it's silly scripts or recommendations for when you talk to your kids, you know, like what to say, what not to say to make this, you know, effective? Yeah, we do. And it, it again, it's going to vary by age, depending on if you have a four-year-old kid versus a 15-year-old kid, that conversation is definitely going to be different. Um, and it's, specifically with regards to how collaborative it is. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely encourage parents to steer away from using the app in a controlling way and really encouraging that dialogue. So this is explaining why you're installing it. Again, making sure that you're creating those rules with your kid, not just independently and then blocking their device and like, ha, 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 you know, I just set, set up this app and you didn't even realize it. You know, we don't want to surprise them. They should know what's happening um, and why. So that's definitely key. And we, we really do encourage that. And then what's the, uh, the future of the app? What do you see as next? That's another great question. Um, so I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but we've been working on another program called VIEW that's diving a little bit more into the intelligent insights side of things and, and reporting. And so we're hoping to continue developing that solution and potentially adding it into our pact, which is one of the main things that our team is focusing on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, we have some other really cool ideas for location-based rules, for example. So if a kid is arriving at school, all of 
the apps except for educational apps and maybe a messaging app that they use to communicate with their parent would block. Um, or if they get to a tutor's house, then everything is blocked or, you know, after bedtime, everything is blocked. It kind of just depends on where they are, or what schedule is kicking in and the, the application would intelligently determine the device status from there. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you brought up, uh, you know, kids being tired and all that, you know, I, we, we set up uh, like a charging station at night, you know, because my daughters would have their phone in their room and I would peek in and, you know, I could see the light and they would try to hide it. And I would like, put that away. But yeah. you know, what, what we did is we did a charging station downstairs. So, you know, at like 10 o'clock, everyone's got to put their phone there and that's it because the temptation was just too, uh, too great to use it. But this, this would help too. This would be really good. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's a very common, um, common tactic that parents use. And we even encourage parents who have our pact installed to continue doing that if it's working. Um, cause it certainly makes sense and for adults as well, but yeah. Okay. Well, excellent. Um, what's the best way is, is it available on iOS and Android and what's the best way for people to get the app? So we offer management of iOS and Android child devices and we have our parent app can be installed in the iOS app store or the Google play store and Parents can also sign up for accounts at our website, which is rpact.com. So that's O-U-R-P-A-C-T. Okay, very good. Any any other last personal message you want to give or, um, I don't know, any advice or thoughts you want to tell parents listening? Um, I mean, the main thing that I really would drive home is that parents, a lot of parents just think I don't want to um, – be so controlling and I want to have this trust with your kid and they misinterpret our solution as being almost overbearing when it really isn't so much about that. Every child should have limits set up around technology and um, along with those limits, there should be that conversation. It's just one way to make the whole process easier, to automate it, to hold everyone accountable to the agreements that they're they have in place because this is a problem undeniably and it's something that um you know moving forward parents are going to need to be thinking about it's just like teaching your child to ride their bike or tie their shoelaces you need to teach your child how to be responsible on technology and using technology okay excellent well Paige, thank you for coming i appreciate it it's been a good call yeah definitely thank you for having me You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now, and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you. Thank you.